Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Welcome back, viewers. We were talking about uh, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim in a lot of detail, and now we would start with Surah Al-Fatiha. As you learn in Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, this verse of the Quran, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, very beautifully, out of love, He introduced Himself to the man that Bismillah. You should start with the name of Allah because He is the doer of everything, and then. Even though he is magnificent, but he is also very merciful. He is Ar Rahman and he is Ar Rahim. We already did the details. Now the time came that the man has to respond to it. How would a man respond to it? Uh, that is also taught by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. What should you do to be thankful to the greatness? What should you do for the uh, to be uh, to be thankful to the mercy of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala? That is that procedure is given in Surah Al Fatiha. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala starts this surah very beautifully. He says, "Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin." When you look at the majesty of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, when you look at the vast mercy of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, you have no choice but to say, "Alhamdulillah." All praises are for Allah, Ar Rabbil Alamin, who is the sustainer of all the universe. Subhanallah. Alhamdulillah. Al means all hamd means praises all types of praises is there if there is a word of glorification that has to go back to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and no one else but sometimes we see that we end up praising so many different things we uh, we praise the work of an artist we were we praise the buildings we praise the fruits we praise the plants we praise the valleys and the rivers and the oceans but the what it means the all praises return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means that no matter what makhluk of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we praise eventually that praise goes back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he is behind the scenes of, of behind all the scenes that are present we don't see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly what we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through all the events and all the makhluk that are present in this universe that's why all the praises go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you praise our artwork, you are not praising the artwork, you are praising the artist behind it. When you are praising the painting, you are not praising the painting, you are praising the painter who is behind it. Whenever you are praising a building, you are not praising a building, you are praising the architect and you are praising the builder behind it. In the same way, when you are praising the makhluk of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your, that praise goes back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is because you are praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the one because of which that makhluk came into existence. So Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. What a beautiful response. And Alhamd means the praises, the glorification done by the words on such qualities which are personal and they are by choice. So all the good qualities that are by choice and they are personal, they belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one else has the qualities by the, which are their personal. If you see kindness in someone, that kindness is not his personal quality. It is because the kindness was given to him from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If somebody is generous, that generosity, that quality of being generous came from Allah. So if somebody has any quality that you see, this comes from Allah, that is not his personal quality. And alhamd means the praise that is done on someone's personal quality. So that means... If you are making a praise, if you are glorifying someone, the true glorification can go only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He deserves all the glorification. So this is a statement which has, which in itself is an evidence. It's a self-supporting uh, uh, statement. Alhamdulillah, you should all praises to Allah because He is the one who deserves the praises and there is no way you can doubt this. Alhamdulillah. Rabbil Alameen. And what, uh, what is the quality of Allah? Rabbil Alameen. He is the Rabb. He is the Lord of all the universes. What does the word Rabb mean? A lot of people would translate the word Rabb as a sustainer. Some people would say Lord. Some would say Master. But the reality is that you don't have a synonym of word Rabb in any other language. The word Rabb is so complicated. It means the Lord. It means the Master. It means the sustainer. It means the one who nurtures, one who nourishes, one who reforms, one who upbrings, one who shows kindness, one who loves. All this is defined in the word Rabb. He, he is the Rabb. He loves the universe and the dwellers of the universe. He upbrings them. He reforms them. He feeds them. He sustains them. He makes them better every inst in every instant. So He is the Rabb. 
alamin of all the alam alam means universe alamin means universes there is so many different aqwal that there is a thousand universe and some people uh, some ulama have said there is 600 universes of land there are 400 universes of water some people say there are so many different universes we don't know exact count but whatever allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created is the, his universe and it is in his knowledge so it's a huge vast universe and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone he is the sustainer of this and he bring he is the one who is behind all this universe he is the uh, he is a sole sustainer of this universe so this is amazing alam alam means Ma yu'lamu bihi. Alam means ma yu'lamu bihi. The one through which someone is known. So alam is everything that is not Allah. If it is Allah, it is the divine being who is the creator. And something that is created is part of an alam. Because, because of that creation, Allah is could be seen. All the creation that we see today is the shadow of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Through that creation, we understand uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we see this big universe, in a certain order, we know the majesty and the power of Allah. We know the Qudrat of Allah. When we know things happen against our will, we plan so much about for certain things and things go other way around, we know that there is the Qudrat that is behind the scenes. We know somebody has an ikhtiyar, somebody has a choice which is above the ikhtiyar that we have. If somebody uh, something goes in a certain way, we know that there is a controller above all the controllers. So, Rabbil Alameen, he is the Rabb, he is the sustainer of the Alam, and Alam basically means Ma Yu'lamu Bihi, that with these universes and what goes around in the universe, we can see the Lord of the universe, we can see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With every makhluk that we see around us, it gives us the picture how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. We, through the beauty of the Flowers, we know the beauty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With the sweetness of the honey, we know the sweetness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So any makhluk you take through that makhluk, we know the uh, we know that much about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is so beautiful. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. All praises for that Allah Rabbil Alameen who is the sustainer of all the universes. Ar Rahman Ar Rahim. If you want to be the sustainer, if he is the sustainer, the number one thing you need to become a sustainer, to become a reformer, to become a, uh, to become a person who does the tarbiyat of it, you have to have the love. So the next thing Allah says, Ar-Rahman, Alhamdulillah, Allah is one who is Ar-Rahman, who is the beneficent, Ar-Rahim, who is the most merciful. Nobody forces him to control the universe. Nobody, he's not forced. To nourish, he's not forced to sustain, he's not for, forced to control. It is Ar Rahman and Ar Rahim. It is his mercy because of which he he controls everything and he takes care of everything. Ar Rahman, I just said that in the previous segment. Ar Rahman ala al arsh istawa. His Rahma is above every other thing that he has. Is Ar Rahma is above his ghadab, his anger that controls this universe. Ar Rahman Ar Rahim. And now, what happens when you know that Allah is so merciful, you know, uh, there is a chance you can misuse His ni'mah. When your parents are very kind towards you, they don't, uh, they don't punish you when you deserve it, they, don't, uh, they reward you whenever you don't deserve it, what happens? You start misusing. You start misusing this benefit. So, now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns the Maliki Yawmiddin, that he is the day, he is the Malik, he is the owner of the day of judgment. That even though Allah has bestowed so many blessings upon you, He is a Rahman and He is a Rahim, He is the sustainer of the universe, He is your Rabb, you can count on Him, and He is, uh, he is always going to help you. But Maliki Yawmiddin, uh, don't forget that you will be accountable for how you utilize these ni'mah. You will be accountable. You cannot oppress. You cannot do anything wrong. You cannot disobey him, or you cannot uh, you cannot take the rights of the people around you. You have to give the rights of the people, and you have to give the rights of Allah and His makhluk. So, Maliki Yomidin, He is the owner of the day of judgment, and that that is the day of judgment on which you would be questioned. You will be answerable for the things that you have done. Maliki Yomidin. So this is another lesson. This is another quality of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. 
Maliki Yomidin. He is the owner of the Day of Judgment. And we know from our Iman, from our faith, that He is the owner of every single day. He is the owner of today. He is the owner of yesterday. He is going to be the owner of tomorrow. He is going to be the owner of the Day of Judgment. So, why would Allah say, Maliki Yomidin, that He is the owner of the Day of Judgment when He is the owner of all the days? Why that day is specific? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes the ownership. So answer to that is given by a different ulama. They say that in today's time, in these days that we live in, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given ikhtiyar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given some level of ownership to everyone. Right? You are given the power over your own family. You are given the power over your children. If you are a manager at work, you are given a power over certain hundred people in, uh, in your workplace. If you are some kind, of, some kind of a senator or politician or someone, you have some kind of power over few thousands of people. And if you are a president, you have a power over few million people. So in this world, we see the change of power and uh, a lot of people are given the power. But on that day, all the kings and all the beggars would be standing in the same line. Nobody would have no power, no uh, uh, preference over the other based on their status. So in this dunya, this dunya is the place of status, different statuses, but that day there would not be any status. The only status would be that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would hold that He would be Maliki Yawmiddin. So that's what it means, Maliki Yawmiddin. Today we all have certain level of responsibilities and we have certain level of power. And then <coughs> in these first ayat, let's do a quick recap. Allah says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. That Rabb is the one uh, Alhamdulillah, all praises are for Allah, Rabbil Alameen. He is the sustainer of the universe. When we know He is the sustainer, that means we know that He has the qudrat over everyone, He has the power over everyone, He has the ilam of everyone, He has the ikhtiyar of everyone. All the qualities of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are learned by knowing that He is Rabbil Alameen. Another quality of Allah is known, Ar-Rahman, that is mercy, is mercy is, uh, His mercy is the reason for which this world is running. Ar-Rahim, that His mercy would be shown on the Day of Judgment. Maliki Yawmiddin, He is going to ask us for our actions on the Day of Judgment. There is a Day of Judgment on which we will be accountable for the things that we have done. Iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'een Now, when the majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is imprinted on the heart of the man, now what do you say? Just picture this, this, just picture this, close your eyes and see, I have someone who has control over everyone. All praises go back to him because he is the, he is the source of all goodnesses and all perfections. He is the most merciful and he has the control, he is going to ask me for what I do. What do you do next? You say, only you I worship, I have no one else to worship. Because if you are so great, and only you we seek help from. إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُوا Only you, نَعْبُدُوا We worship. The question is, uh, we worship, what does it mean we worship? Why Allah did not say, إِيَّاكَ أَعْبُدُوا That only you, I worship. إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُوا Only you, I worship. Meaning, there is two meanings. One meaning that it tells us that we should worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a congregation. If you have to pray salah, it's better to pray in the masjid in a congregation. All together we worship. One meaning is, Iyaka na'abudu, only you, you uh, we worship, we means body and soul. We as a body and soul, both together we worship Allah. When you stand up in the salah, worship Allah with your body and soul. A lot of times we pray, our body is there, but our heart is somewhere else. I have to give it 100% when I worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because He is so magnificent, because He is so great. Right? He, he has a lot of rights upon me. So when I stand up in the salah in front of him, I should not let my iPhone distract me. I should not have any other distractions, any other thoughts when I'm in the salah. When I'm worshipping Allah, I, I have to sacrifice all my energies, all my, all my, uh, my time and whatever I have for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
if I have to pay zakat, this has to be solely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and no one else. Only Allah I worship. So I have to have ikhlas, I have to have sincerity. It should not be to show off. When I go for hajj, it is only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not for any other reason that I want to travel and I want to travel the world, I want to see the world. Not for that reason, only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I... I have to worship my with my body and soul, with my heart to it. I have to give my heart to it. And only you, we ask for help. Nasta'in means we ask you for help. So that means that after you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what do you do next? You ask Allah for your help. That you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made us weak. We always constantly, we are in need of Allah's help in so many different matters of our life. Nobody else can fulfill our needs, only Allah is there to fulfill our needs. Iyaka nasta'een, Iyaka nasta'een. One meaning means, when you make worship, you make dua. Iyaka na'budu, to you, only I worship with my body and soul. Wa Iyaka nasta'een, and after I make the ibadah, I may raise my hands in dua, in seeking help from you. A lot of people, uh, they pray, they come to the masjid, they pray, and they are in so much rush, they do not make dua and they leave. They go against this ayah of the Quran. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his sahaba, they used to always make dua after every salah that they prayed. After they would pray, they would sit there and give that extra time and make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Iyaka na'abudu. Whenever you make ibadat of Allah, wa iyaka nasta'in. You have to raise your hands in dua to ask help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And now the help is of two types. This is one confusion I need to clarify. That isti'anat, seeking help, is of two types. In this dunya, we, this surah teaches us that we should only ask for help from Allah, but in our day-to-day -day life, we seek help from our fellow people. Right? When you get sick, you get the help of the doctor. When you have uh, something to do in your, work, uh, in your home, you, ha you seek the help of the engineer. When you get, if you want to build a house, you get the help of a builder so you get help from different people in this world so what does it mean does it go against the lesson that is taught in the surah no why because the isti'anat seeking help is of two types one is within the limitations of the means and one is above the limitations of the means within the limitations of the means allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is musabbibul asbab he has connected everything through the means I ha if I have to get from point A to point B, I have to stand up and I have to walk to point B and then I would get to point B. So this is means, this is the means. If I have to get the water from the well, I have, I have to use a means. I have to drop a bucket in the well and then I have to fetch water for myself. Even though Allah is able to give me water without any means, but Allah is musabbibul asbab, He has connected everything through the means in this dunya. So within the limitations of the means, I can seek help. But the real objective can only be asked from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What it means, if I'm sick, within the limitations of the means, I can see doctor and I, I can ask for treatment. I can ask for medication. I can use the medication to feel better. But end of the day, I have to depend on Allah for the health. I cannot ask health from the doctor. I cannot, I can, uh, if I'm hungry, I need to eat some food I, the, within the limitations of the means. But if I have to ask for satisfaction, that satisfaction is going to come from Allah. The food is not going to satisfy my hunger. That's the, that's the belief I have to have. That's the faith I have to have. If I have to drink water to fill my thirst, I have to drink water as within the limitations of the means, but then satisfaction comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is what it means. Isti'anat from Allah means that above any limitation, above any asbab, I have to depend on Allah, but within the limitations of the asbab, I can ask, from, I, I can ask for help from anyone that I want, whoever is appropriate. But the result of that help is, is, depends on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore you see, a lot of times you go to the doctor, it is not all the time you get health. You, sometimes you get healthy, sometimes you get even more sick. Why? Because the health comes from, from Allah, the cure comes from Allah, and the doctor is only a means to, uh, who, would, uh, who would take you towards the health. So, Now, after we establish that we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and after we establish that we need to ask Allah for any types of help, what is the next thing? 
what is the four mo what is the most important thing that we need and in the beginning of the lesson i said everybody is looking for hidayat everyone is looking for a way of life everyone is looking for such an ideology that would make him successful that would uh, free from any kinds of fear for the future any regrets of the akhirat uh, of the past regrets of the uh, past and fear from the future so that is called the hidayat now the most important thing is what we ask here ihdina sirat al mustaqim oh my rab oh my allah ihdina guide us sirat al mustaqim to the path of to the straight path ihdina sirat al mustaqim guide us to the straight path now and any type of tafsir that you look up there is two explanations of hidayat guide us meaning show us or take us one is called ira'atu tariq show us the path which is mustaqim which is the right path show us the right path or uh, the next thing is isal ilal matlub or take me to my destination the hidayat is defined as two things one is ira'atu tariq showing of the path that leads you to the destination one is isal ilal matlub take me to the destination somebody comes to you and he asks you where is the where is the grocery store one is you show him the path that you when you head out take east from the light light take north and take that highway and this is how you end up on the grocery store this is showing the path it does not confirm anything it does not confirm that this guy is all is always going to reach the destination it does not confirm but the another thing is isal ilal matlub take me to the destination he says okay i'm not going to give you the directions all i'm going to do is uh, you ride with me in my car or you follow me and then i'm going to take you to the destination this way you confirm that this brother is going to reach the destination so al mustaqim here we are not asking allah to show us the path here we are asking allah with that we do not depend on our our own soul that it would let us reach the destination the shaitan is constantly constantly his uh, our uh, he is affecting us and he's our worst enemy so we don't uh, we don't depend on our uh, our own strength we ask allah ihdina sirat al mustaqim take us to our destination ihdina ihdina here it means isal al matlub take us to our destination the right appropriate destination that is the right one sirat al mustaqim sirat means the path mustaqim means the straight uh, there's a lot of discussion about why Allah says Surat. Surat. You know, the, the word choice in the Quran has an importance uh, because this is the book of the most wise. So the word selection is also uh, has, the, uh, has a reason, it has a rhyme and reason behind it. There is a reason why Allah did not use the word Tariq. Tariq is the mean of path. Allah did not use the word Ihdina uh, Ihdina Tariq. Do not. Allah did not use that. Allah used the word sirat. Why? Sirat, when you, you, when you uh, <coughs> listen to this word sirat, what comes into your brain? There is another place. In the hereafter, we're going to have to deal with pull sirat, the bridge of the sirat. In other words, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking our attention that after death, there is something called pull sirat, the bridge of the sirat. If you follow this sirat al mustaqim here in this dunya that pull sirat is upon allah to make us pass through very easily but if we stumble on this sirat al mustaqim in this dunya then on that sirat we would also stumble and if we fail in this dunya to follow the sirat al mustaqim then also on sirat al mustaqim we would be we would be fail we would fail to cross the sirat al mustaqim so this is the importance of using this word sirat in place of the tariq and then the word comes mustaqim mustaqim means straight again allah did not use the word sirata sawi sirata sawi the straight path allah used the word mustaqim mustaqim means the middle way does not have any extreme extreme to this side or extreme to this side right allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us to follow the middle way we always asking the middle way from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we don't want to become Oh, we don't want to go towards any extreme mustaqim we have to be in the middle way uh, meaning that when you worship uh, the one extreme would be that you are not keeping the balance all you are doing is only worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you are all constantly asking Allah for help but you're not doing anything to go towards that you know you can ask for rizq but then 
you also may have to make an earning. So an other extreme would be that you're always at the job place, you're always at the workplace, but you're, all, you're trying all the means to make an earning, but you're not asking the help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the middle way would be ask Allah's help and then do your part that you're supposed to do. In the same way, so there is a Sirat al-Mustaqeem in your Ibadat, there is a Sirat al-Mustaqeem in your Mahamilat, and there is a Sirat al-Mustaqeem in your Akhlaq, that you should not be, uh, you should be, you should not be so arrogant, you should not be a coward, you should be courageous. The middle way is being courageous. If you are an arrogant person, that's also one extreme. And if you are a coward person, this is also another extreme. Allah wants you to be in mustaqim, in a middle way, which is being courageous. So your akhlaq also requires to be in a sirat mustaqim. So we ask Allah of the sirat mustaqim, the middle way, the balanced way, uh, that leads us to the right uh, to Allah subhanahu wa taala. And another meaning of mustaqim means istiqamat, being steadfast. That you have to be steadfast on this sirat mustaqim, on this straight path. If you pray a lot of salah today. You pray 10 rakah of tahajjud one day and the next day you're not praying anything. You're not even praying the fard. This is extreme. This is not going, this is not sirat mustaqim If you're fasting a lot in sometimes and you're not fasting in the month of Ramadan, on the other hand, this is also an extreme. So there has to be a middle way. Uh, there has to be a day which is steadfast. You have whatever do, whatever amal you do, you have to do it constantly. You have to do it, uh, you have to be steadfast on it. So, Sarat al Mustaqim means the right path, and you have to be steadfast on this right path. Ihdina Sarat al Mustaqim. And what is the definition of Sarat al Mustaqim? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala defines it. Sarat al Ladina an Amta alayhim. Path of those people upon which you have given your name, the people that you have favored. Sarat al Ladina an Amta alayhim. Ghair al Maghdubi alayhim. And not the path of those who have gained your anger, who have taken your wrath. والضالين, and not the ones who have gone astray. So the ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there are different forms of the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The, but the biggest ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that He gives you the right uh, level of iman, the, the right uh, mindset, the right ideology, the right faith. This is the name of Allah. In other words, He gives you the right point of view. Quwwat nazari this is one. And then quwwat amali means the next, uh, he gives you the strength of doing the amal. One is the iman and one is the amal. When he, when he blesses you with these two favors, he gives you the right state of iman and he gives you the right attitude to do the amal on your knowledge. This is the biggest name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Surat al ladina an'amta alayhim. And who are those people? In another place, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions them in the Quran. Ulaika an amallahu alayhim minan nabiyyin wa siddiqin wa shuhadai wa salihin. These people upon which Allah has put his special favors, they are nabiyyin, they are anbiya. Wa siddiqin, they are the siddiq. Wa shuhada wa salihin. These are the special people who have uh, who have taken the favors of Allah so show us the path of these people Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not say that the right path is the path of Quran and Sunnah Allah said that there is a way there is a chance that you might not be able to find your path and you might be lost and not reach your destination but these are the people who have taken my special favors if you follow their footsteps you would you would definitely reach your destination if you live the time of the anbiya associate yourself with the anbiya if you live the time of the siddiqeen then associate yourself with the siddiqeen and if you find your time with the shuhada then find the company of the shuhada if you live with the salihin then attach yourself with the salihin when you stay with the righteous you become a righteous you become a pious person and you find the sirat mustaqim that way if you have if you are struggling how you could be punctual in the salah, just find someone who is punctual in the salah. Stay in his company and you will learn how to be punctual in the salah. If you are struggling to learn how to fast, stay with the people who fast. If you are struggling that how can I bring the habit of Quran in my life, then stay with the people who have associated themselves highly with the Quran. And then eventually you will learn this quality of 
uh, recitation of the Quran would also come inside of you. If you are learning how to be generous, stay with generous. You will be become generous. So this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, اِهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Show us the right path and that path is the one of the Anbiya and Siddiqeen and Shuhada and Salihin. So Anbiya and Siddiqeen are the people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them a very high level of Iman. Very high level of Iman and Ilam. Uh, their Quwwat and Nazari is very strong. And Shuhada and Salihin are the people upon which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them the very high level of Amal. How it works out, what sense it makes, it will require some extra time to discuss and that, we can, that could be done in some other time, in some other session. But here I would not go in much detail. So these are the people, An'amta alayhim. غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ alayhim, And not the one who has taken your anger. Who would take on Allah's anger? Why would someone not follow the sirat mustaqim Either he would not know what the sirat mustaqim is, or he would know what the sirat mustaqim is, but his, because of his attitude, because of his arrogance, he is not going to follow. So, غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ alayhim, Allah's ghazab, Allah's wrath is upon the people who understand what the sirat mustaqim is, but because of their arrogance, because of their wrong attitude, because of their wrong, uh, bad akhlaq, they don't follow the sirat mustaqim. They become in the category of maghdubi alayhim. Right? So, <coughs> the mistaq of that, the, the interpretation of these people is uh, Yahud. Yahud, these are the people who knew who Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is. who knew what the right path was, but they did not follow because of their arrogance. And then, uh, and the people who have gone astray. These are the people who do not even have the right knowledge. They are not in the right uh, level. They, they don't have the right iman. So, they cannot follow. How can they follow the right path if they don't know what the right path is? So, this is the people who are Nasara. And the people who have gone astray. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect. First thing is Allah grant us the ilam. And then give us the right attitude. The right set of mind to follow the, the right iman. That Allah subhanahu, the ilam that Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. This is the end of Surah Al-Fatiha. And after you recite Surah Al-Fatiha you say Ameen. It means may Allah accept it. This is the dua. Ameen is what? It is nothing but a dua that this... Surah was a big dua, uh, and we wa want this dua to be accepted in our favor. So this was the end of Surah Al-Fatiha. So dear brothers and sisters, I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. Uh, the first uh, portion was very brief for the people who were looking for a brief translation. And people who were looking for a detailed uh, description, we went over that too. And I hope uh, we'll see you again for the next lesson of Surah Al-Baqarah. Until then, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.